Hi guys, it's Kelly here from KDS Keltec. Today, we're gonna to talk about paint. Hi right, guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about sinkage. Settling, drop back, there's many technical, no, slang words for a technical problem. Um, I call it sinkage. Now, from that distance, you won't be able to tell the difference in either of these panels, but, so let me explain what this panel is. This is the same clear coat all over, and it's the same brand of paint. What is, we've got one which is a single stage or two stage, so you've got the black and then the clear coat, which is then two stage, or some people call it one stage because they ignore the clear coat on the surface. This side is either two stage or three stage. What you've got is your base green, then there's another layer of glitter, many layers. So there's your two stage and then the clear coat, three stage. So in some countries, it's a, this is a single stage, that's a two stage. Really it should be called two stage and three stage because you should include the clear coat. But we've got the same clear coat over to both of these, the same amount painted at the same time. Now there's a sort of phenomenon going on here where if in a minute you're gonna zoom in, I can actually see the cameraman reflecting perfectly at this angle in the black and it looks sharp. And then I'll go to the green side and it looks really bad. Now, why have I chosen a pearl color? It's to do with material build thickness. Unfortunately, paint's changed over the years and the water-based paint, there is a slight issue. And I'm talking about one of the issues, there's many, but there's one issue to the end user and even to us as spraying cars. And that is the, the sinkage. So if we come in close first, yep. I can drop it down a bit. So you might be able to notice that the green side is really, really dull looking. It's almost sucked the life out of the gloss, whereas the black looks a lot wetter. No, it isn't just because black reflects more. Oh, and obviously that is a true fact there. What we've actually got is the more material that you put on this side, which there will be a lot more on the green side, it becomes almost like a big fluffy mattress. It's like a really fat mattress. So there's a lot more material. So what happens over time, as it's all curing and what we call outgassing, it shrinks, it settles. So if we chose to deliberately put lots and lots and lots of layers of black on there, what would actually happen is it would mimic this finish. So people always think of thick figures as being better. So I see loads of people wielding a paint depth gauge. I'm gonna put this down, wielding some sort of paint depth gauge, or paint thickness gauge, and then start quoting now their heroes. Oh my God, this thickness, that thickness. Well, there is a reason why paint has to be thin. What we're talking about, we want to be thick is the clear coat, 660 microns, sorry, we want. This one would measure much higher than this one. And we can take a reading and we can put some B-roll footage and put it in. We'll take a reading of this one and a reading of this one. They will both have the same amount of clear coat, but what the problem you've got is actually there's lots and lots of color. So it's very thick compared to that, but the clear coat on top is the same. So first of all, we're gonna measure the clear coat just to prove that the clear coat on both of these is the same. So I'm gonna take a reading there. So we've got 49. I've got the graph on as well to show me the layers and it's the top layer, the first layer, and it's 49 microns. So let's go across to this guy. And there you go, 48. There's one micron variation across there, that's absolutely nothing. When a human hair is roughly 100 microns, very, very good quality, A4 paper is 80 to 90 microns. If I actually make the resolution larger, so I'm actually gonna measure a, a larger or greater depth of greater thickness, as I do this, you'll start seeing other peaks. But I've asked the gauge to read just one layer, the top layer. So I'm gonna reset the gauge now to read three layers. That's all you can read, up to three and then zoom out and see if we can actually show you, like it's showing now, the peaks. And we can get a measurement of each one of the individual layers. It's all a bit irrelevant, really, because the only thing we actually polish is the top part. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into calibration, and then we go to three layers. Before I put the graph on, it's trying to measure three layers and a total from my last reading. So what I'm now gonna do is take a new reading, so I'm gonna take a reading this side. So what we've got now, we got a 52 and a 30. The 52 is the closest is the top. And again, that's pretty much bang on. A clear coat should be between 
sort of 45 to 60, ideally 52, 55 would be middle, middle of the road, but that's bang on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna change the, the, and zoom out to show you if there's any other layers showing there. And there's this tiny little spike here, which would be the plastic. What you've actually got is your base coat, 30 microns and 52 microns of clear, which you would do on this side. So you quite often see cars with 80 microns. If I adjust this to read two layers, because it hasn't found three. So if I go into a setting, it doesn't give me a total. I can just total it up myself because it hasn't seen the third layer. You tell it to lead free, see free. If it can't see free, it won't measure free. So if I now go and do two layers, exit that. You'll notice now, it's stored the figure. It's now saying, yeah, 82 microns. You see cars regularly at that lower figure and you have detailers going, oh, there's no paint. It's dangerous, you're gonna go through. Well, black covers extremely well. There's no primer on this plastic. It's just a, well, almost like a one micron layer of thin plastic primer to make it key. So you've just got color and your clear coat. We'll do the same on this side, but there's gonna be a lot more layers. So it's gonna need a larger resolution scale. I'm gonna to have to adjust the gauge again. So what I'm gonna do, go back into the graph, turn the graph on and off just to reset it. So now it's got a graph there. I'm then gonna take a reading again this side. And what we've got now, we're gonna to have to zoom out because it's, I know it's got more layers and I can see a peak there, peak there, peak there. So already it's starting to show 167. So I'm gonna make sure there's no more because there's actually got another peak there. Now it might have five, six layers on cars. This can only measure between one and three layers. You can move this resolution around to read the three layers you choose to read or one. So actually in like a, a trifle, of a sort of dessert trifle, you can say, ignore the top layer, I'm gonna measure the middle layers. Again, it'd be absolutely pointless for any reason in our trade to do that. But some industries, they might wanna make sure there's a certain amount of primer and thickness. So what we've got, we've got a total of 167, which is repeated twice. Now that 133 looks like, that's the clear coat then, is now incorrect reading. It's not, it cannot see very easily the boundary between the layers. I have to literally zoom the resolution in. Once I do that, so there is a lot of understanding of paint and how it has worked. As soon as I do this, actually, I'm gonna go high to the high layer. It will start to dissect that large 133 and show me separate layers. If I go up with the lower reading as well, because I don't wanna look at I'm gonna do it so I don't wanna look at anything small as it comes along now. It's gonna to start to dissect. So we've got the 50 original, but what we've got now is picking that one up. If I then go to this one, you can see it's got a 21 now. 50's not changed, if that makes sense. The clear coat's still the same. There's a 20 micron, which will be almost certainly the glitter coat, because this is a free stage. You've got a green base, then a green glitter, then the, the actual cut clear coat on top. So there is your glitter middle coat, sort of sandwich layer. If I now go back out, I can pick up the 42 of this one, which is your color coat, and that's the green there. So what we've essentially got, you've seen earlier in total, we had 167 this side, 80 this side. You're almost double the amount of material this side to this side, which is what makes this paint sink and settle. So as you can see, this is a plastic panel, this will work. You do need to understand technology and paint, what type of paint it is. You do need to know how to adjust this. It's a complex gauge, but it will work in this scenario. This is on plastic. We, we can use it on metal as well. We can use it on carbon fiber. So what's happened here, as it's all settled and shrunk, it's all dropped back. This can be fixed and it has to be fixed once it's settled. So that's why you see a lot of these type of car colors, like the Lamborghini behind, they hand worked at the factory to remove this problem. And unfortunately, it's a water-based problem. Solvent never dropped back the same. So why we've got this panel over here, there's a solvent panel. And this has got, this green, we've just been holding, has got your base color and two layers of pearl. So we've got base coat, two layers, three layers, four layers. So this part in particular, 
is exactly the same build as the green in that it's got two layers, it's got the base colour, many layers of that, and then the two layers and the clear coat, and it's the same clear coat as well. So the clear coat's the same, but it looks a lot sharper and better reflection. The differences between that one and that one, the difference between those two there, there's one difference. That's water base colour, that's solvent colour. Unfortunately, in Europe, we can't use solvent paint, solvent colour, we have to use water base. So that means every factory car has this phenomenon that can be polished away, sometimes needs sanding. Aftermarket repaints have the same problem. And as you can see though, if, you put, if you've you got a colour that covers very well, that's very, very thin, you don't have the same issue. Now, most painters are always gonna put more material on than less, just to make sure it's covered. So as you put more and more material on, you get this horrible look that needs working at the end. So it's hand sanding and polishing at the end. So it's fixable, it's not an issue, you can fix it very easily, but unfortunately it's a new problem that exists since switching from solvent paint to water-based paint. That's one issue there, that this happens. We see this on brand new cars, we do know how to fix it obviously, the fact we know how it happens and we can show how it happens. So it's a, a new issue for detailers, painters, your end users, your car always looks dull. It needs polishing, including brand new cars. We are always doing brand new cars, because technically, I can check now, there's probably no swells, no. So if we capture that with that bulb in that green, you'll see there is no swells in that green area when you're in the, the round bulb, same as the sunlight. I hope it's captured it. So there's no swells, so you'd say there's no need to polish that. But we can actually polish that and remove this sinkage. We might need to sand it if it's very, very bad, but we can vastly improve that finish just from simple polishing. So you can polish now to remove sinkage, not swirls. So hopefully that's a useful video. Hopefully all the videos you've been watching about the paint series are useful. Don't forget as always to like, subscribe and smash that bell. I'm Kelly Harris. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.